I'm going to show you why it's really important to update the BIOS on your Tough Gaming Z790 BTF Wi-Fi, especially if you're using a 13th or 14th gen CPU from Intel. There are a number of issues recently which you need to get on top of, and I'd recommend updating your BIOS as soon as you can to make sure there aren't any problems with your CPU or at least reduce the potential for these issues. I'm using both a 14th gen and 13th gen CPU in this in different configurations. But I'm going to show you the process for updating your BIOS and how to go about it and why it's important to do so. So here you can see the BTF motherboard inside the Corsair 6500X. Once you've built it and installed everything, then go about the process of updating your BIOS. It is important to do so because what you'll find is that under stress testing and benchmarks, you might be getting some hot temperatures. So you can see it running particularly hot, especially if you've got an i9 processor. And that's constantly the case anyway with these high-end CPUs. So it's not necessarily this motherboard that's an issue there. But what you might find over time is that you may end up with issues where games start crashing. You get blue screens of death and other problems where you're getting these video out of memory errors which is actually related to the Intel CPU and to a number of settings on there and other things. So with a BIOS update, you can hopefully reduce the chance of this happening and it is worth doing as soon as possible. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. One of the reasons this is happening is because historically on older BIOS versions, the motherboard settings were basically set to allow the CPU to draw more power than it actually needs for overclocking purposes. So as default, it might be set to do that with extreme levels of wattage and power being drawn, which then leads to very hot CPU temperatures, but also instability issues over time, which can potentially damage your CPU. So the way to fix it, or at least to prevent it happening, hopefully, is to first of all, get yourself a thumb drive. Insert the thumb drive into your PC or into a separate one if you're using a different system and to update it. And then what you want to do is format that drive, but we're going to download the files for this. So head over to the website for the motherboard, head over to the BIOS and firmware section there and look for the latest BIOS update. You want to grab the most recent one. You may find in the future, especially in August, it's worth knowing. So if you're watching this video in the future, there'll be more updates as well. Watch out for those because Intel's encouraging and pushing out more updates to make sure that this is fixed in future and your CPU is protected. So you download the latest version, whatever you can, and then extract it when in Windows. So right click on the folder and click extract. And as standard, you should find that that just extracts to the download folder. So there you'll see the two files, BIOS renamer and then the BIOS file itself. So the instructions from Azus say you need to use the BIOS renamer tool to rename the file first of all. So you can do that. I, however, usually copy both files across just in case. So we want to format the drive that we're going to use, which is drive letter M. So right click and then click format on that. So just make sure it's clean of any other files. You can just delete whatever's on there, but formatting it is the quickest way to do this. Make sure you've clicked on the right drive, format that so it's empty, and then we're going to move the files over. So first of all, we're just going to copy that Tough Gaming Z790 BTF Wi-Fi file, which is the 1661 file. And then we'll use the BIOS renamer file, which will rename that file into A5514. And then we'll move that across as well. So both files are now on the drive. Essentially, it's the same BIOS file, but it's just got a different name and convention to it. This isn't really necessary, but if you want to, you can do that. Then you just need to make sure that USB drive is inserted into the motherboard and then restart the PC. And once you do that, press delete and keep mashing it until you end up in the BIOS. When you're in the BIOS, you should find that you can see the current BIOS version at the top left of the screen. So you'll see it says BIOS version 405 here. And what we want to do is click on the advanced mode down the bottom right, then on tool, then on ASUS Easy Flash 3 utility. From there, you'll see lots of different storage devices listed. So if you've got loads of different SSDs and hard disk drives in your system, obviously it will make it difficult to navigate your way through those in order to find it. Just once you've found the right drive, as you can see I've done here, where you can clearly see the files that we just moved across to it, we can click on that and then go about the process of installing it. You'll get a couple of warnings for doing so, and then just click yes to go about the process of reading that file and then updating it, making sure there's a newer version. So you can see here, it's got the right model name and a newer version and the date 
for it is significantly newer than the original one. So click yes, and then you have to wait for the BIOS update to happen. Now, just bear in mind, this will take ages, and also it may restart during the process. Don't panic. Also, don't reset it yourself. Don't power off at any point while it's doing it. Just leave it alone. If you do power off in the middle of it, it could cause big problems. So don't do it. Just leave it to run. Also, you might find that it just turns off and seems like it's turned off completely and then isn't doing anything, which might make you panic. Again, don't just leave it. Don't touch it. It should power back on and then you should end up with it loading up again. You'll see it go through to this screen where you can see it says press F5 to load factory default settings. So do that and then press F1 to take you into the BIOS to tweak a few of the settings there. So now we've got a newer BIOS version. You should find there are some improved settings in here which we can use to ensure the CPU is stable for longer. So we will first of all want to turn on XMP. XMP makes sure your RAM runs at the right speeds. If it was turned on before you updated the BIOS, you might find that it's now turned off. So you'll want to do that. In the top right, you'll notice that easy system tuning is set to normal. That's a good thing because we don't want AI overclocking impacting the longevity of this. Then we're going to head over to AI Tweaker and you'll notice it says Intel default settings now as standard. Make sure that's the case and it's not a Zeus advanced overclocking profile because we want to be using the default settings here. You'll see there's also a warning on this in regards to the power level settings for different CPUs. So bear that in mind. And you can also find out more information about it here. But the idea is to watch out for warnings like this and to make sure that we have those Intel baseline default profile settings in here. So you can see not only do we have the default settings, there's also a performance mode instead of the extreme mode, which might be worth using if you're trying to ensure the longevity of your CPU. And there's also an SVID behavior a bit further down with Intel's failsafe on it too. If you go into the CPU power management section, you'll also see that we now have it set. So it's 253 watts on the power limits, which is ideal because that's what Intel recommends. I've done a video on this before, but hopefully with these settings, you should find that it lasts longer and is more stable. Click to exit, save changes and reset, and you should find that you can then carry on using your machine without worry. If you do this BIOS update nice and early after purchasing the motherboard, hopefully it should help ensure the longevity of it, make sure it runs smoothly and that you don't have any issues. You may also want to check for future updates. As I've said, future BIOS updates may well be worth doing too to make sure it carries on running smoothly. But my experience with this has been great. This has been the Provoke Prawn. I hope you found this video useful. Subscribe for more and check out the links in the description to see more related content. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.